Hello everybody, Maven here, and the final shape is here. I mean, well, at the time I'm recording this, as you can see on the screen, it's almost here. And today, I'm going to be testing out all of the changes to the exotic weapons that they released in the articles the past couple weeks. I'm gonna test them out. That's what I'm gonna do first thing when I log into the game here. And also, if you are new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we got a lot of juicy content on the way that you're not gonna wanna miss out. So let's get to the weapon testing. And then later today or tomorrow, I'm gonna do all of the exotic armor testing from the changes they released in the articles recently. So let's get to it. Hope you enjoy. All right, you know how my testing usually goes, post edit, I like to edit my videos, but this one's gonna be done live, all right? So it's gonna be minimal editing. We're just gonna be doing this with live reaction. So we're gonna start off with the colony here. This is the one I was the most excited for. Final blows are now going to cause additional robots to spawn. So this is definitely the one I'm the most excited for. I want to see if we can just clear out the orrery just like by lobbing a couple shots. So see what happens if we shoot this scion. And it spawns another one. Does it spawn another one? No, just one. So if I shoot a couple out there like this. Okay, uh, I mean, we got one extra kill out of that. Not bad. I mean, let me see. Wait, let me wait for some enemies to spawn in. Let me weaken Carl a bit so more enemies spawn. Okay, now that there's a bunch of enemies around, here's what I'm gonna do. See how many enemies that kills. Really? Nothing? Okay, that's a little bit depressing. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be broken, like lob some shots out and then just clear out the entire room, you know? One kill, two kills, that's it. Wow. I thought this was gonna be so much better. Okay, next up we got the truth. This one day increased its reserves by three and they also gave it a much larger blast radius or something like that to like make up for the fact that it doesn't do impact damage. So now with base reserves, no reserve mods, we have 12 rockets. So I assume that with the double or triple reserves, uh, we can hold like 14 or 15 rockets, which is pretty good. It should be the equivalent to bipod in my opinion, but let's see that area of effect. Okay, so this goblin on the left, we're gonna try to hit him by shooting there. And we did get him. I mean, the, the area of effect is nice, but it also has a lot of fall off, as you can see. It didn't kill these red bar goblins. Next up, we got the Osteo Striga. They, they said something about giving this a four second cooldown on its poison burst. Don't know exactly what that means, but we're gonna find out. See if it's still as strong as I remember it. We got a poison burst there. So now I shouldn't be able to cause another, yeah, for four seconds, there's another burst. So I, it should be like with four second intervals. I mean, it's still good. Like every other kill is still giving me a poison burst. Right there, there was a poison burst. Didn't kill, right there, see every other kill. It's like literally every other kill. That didn't feel like four seconds to me. That felt like way quicker than four seconds. Hold on, let me see something. Well, let me kill out some of these trash mobs real quick. I need the bigger target. I just need the boss. So I'm thinking that if I just lay on the trigger against a fatter boss, well, I, maybe against one single target, I won't be able to make a burst every four seconds. Let's find out. Not if it teleports. One, two, see, it's it's not four seconds. I don't know what they're saying. The Osteo String is still good. If you think it's nerfed, it's not. It's still good, guys. Don't worry, Osteostriga lovers out there. Next up is the Necrochasm. As you know, this thing got the brand new One for Thrall Catalyst. Now, I have already put out gameplay on YouTube with the One for Thrall Catalyst. I tested it out a couple weeks ago, and it's incredible. So I'm just gonna be able to experience it again. And it's amazing, and this is the reason why I think the Kvostov might not see play, because this is too good. Check this out. So we get One for Thrall. We get one for Thrall, right? Now watch the timer on the bottom left of one for Thrall. It just keeps going up. See, with normal one for all, it it's not refreshable. You literally have to wait for it to run out and then proc it again. One for Thrall is refreshable. 
So it's really good. It's really, really good. I just wish that Desperation lasted the same amount of time that One for Thrall did, so they actually had like better synergy, you know? Because One for Thrall lasts a little bit longer than it. Super, super good. I'm gonna die. Oh yeah, th this thing is amazing with One for Thrall. You're definitely gonna wanna give it a try. Top tier PVE pick for like Ad Clear, yeah. Definitely. And I forgot to mention for those who are a little bit newer to the game, but One for All or One for Thrall is a 35% damage increase. Also gives you range, handling, and aim assist. Now we're moving on to the Divinity. So apparently it takes longer for the cage to come up now. So let's go up against that. Uh, let's just go fly over to the boss there and see what happens. Okay, so I've used Divinity a lot, so this should be noticeable. It's still fine. That's definitely still fine. I don't think that's gonna be an issue. I can, I, it is a noticeable amount of time. It takes a little bit longer, but it still comes up. Yeah, when you're just tap firing, it definitely takes a while. It's definitely noticeable, but it's still not like the end of the world, you know? It's still gonna be meta, it's not the end of the world. Okay, next up is the Bastion. This thing got an entirely new perk. Saint's Fist rapidly fires three spreads after a successful melee hit. This weapon gains increased damage, reduced charge time, and improved reload speed. And after hitting a target with most of the pellets in a burst, it increases your melee damage. So the gun and the melee benefit off of each other. It just goes back and forth. So we're gonna start by testing our uh, just our base damage with the gun. And I'm gonna miss most of the pellets, so let's go against Carl here. So our base damage is 3,500, and then after I punch him, 5,100. That's like a 30% damage buff, jeez. And then after I, hold on, let me clear out some ads here, I'm dying. So after I land most of the pellets in a burst, I'll gain increased melee damage. So my base melee damage is 8,000, but then after I land most of the bursts, I get, nope, wait, 17,000. So it's doubled. It is straight up doubled melee damage and like a, a 25 to 30% like damage buff to the, but what about the, hold on. What about the rate of fire? It said charge time. Okay, that rate of fire is okay, or like the increased charge time. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely better. I, I like that change, that's actually pretty strong. But it's just like, the Bastion is still like, despite that, a very sluggish weapon, so I don't see it really seeing play. Like, even though it has Intrinsic Unstoppable, I don't really think that's enough for it, because it's still just like a bad feeling weapon. What I wish they did for this thing is like gave it eight in the magazine and gave it like a controlled burst. I think that's what the Bastion needed. I don't think, I mean, this is a cool ability like flavor wise, but not meta worthy, I don't think. But actually like the more that I think about it, that doubled melee damage could be pretty nice. Like you get the burst off, you swap over to like a one, two punch shotgun in your energy slot and you just go ham with like a grapple with like Banner of War. That could be pretty cool. But we're moving on to the Cerberus Plus One now. Uh, it's supposed to be a buff to the Catalyst, but this is my other Cerberus where I don't wanna put the Catalyst on, so I'm gonna have to grab a different Cerberus. But um, apparently, Focused Fire no longer like has like range drop off or whatever, and it like doesn't slow your rate of fire anymore. So supposedly it's, it's good now, but it only actually procs after a final blow. So I, I'm very curious to see if this is gonna be like insane, because I have a feeling it might be. So let's try it out. But I'm gonna have to grab another server so a quick BRB. Okay, let's give it a try. So get a final blow. And now that should proc the perk. We can do this, focus fire. And it does not, it does not slow your rate of fire anymore. And it refreshes itself. Yo, it refreshes back up to seven seconds. Hold on a second. How, how, how hard is this shred, Carl? Now, for those who are not normal, oh my goodness, that is shredding. I have done like thousands of tests in, the, in this uh, Lost Sector in the Conflux, and I can tell you from experience that that is shredding. But hold on, I wanna test it against Carl. 
Okay, where's Carl? And this is actually like not power cap. This is actually insane, guys. I have done, like I said, thousands of tests against Carl. I've seen a lot of things uh, like their DPS against Carl. And this for a primary is absolutely wild. Okay, so what's crazy is that this is not even infused because this is the, this is like the bottom floor, 1900 power. And weapons do more damage when they're at the, the soft cap, which the soft cap is a 1290, or not 1290. The soft cap is a 1210. And the hard cap, the pinnacle cap is 1220, I believe. Don't call me on that, but I think so. So when this thing is at the soft cap, it's actually gonna destroy Carl. Th like this already at like bottom floor is doing so much damage. I can't even imagine how hard it's gonna shred him when it's actually at the soft cap. So that's insane. We're definitely going to have to revisit the Cerberus in a future video. Now moving on to the dead man's tail. So apparently they changed Cranial Spike so that for each stack you get, it gives you bonus stability, like 2% stability. And then when you're at maximum stacks, you also gain plus 15% damage. And also they increase the rate of fire. Let's see, rate of fire is, uh, 120 still, but when you hip fire, they supposedly increase the rate of fire to one, uh, 140 or wait, something like that. I forget. Oh yeah, that that's definitely noticeably faster than it was before. And, uh, each stack of cranial spike gives bonus stability times two. I mean, yeah, it's stable. It's not that it wasn't already stable before. But I want to see against Carl. I now have Cranial Spike times 5. Why is it not proccing the perk? Where's my perk? It's supposed to do the little whistle. Does it... Did they take that perk away? The whistle? Why did it not work? It's supposed to proc it times 5, right? The whistle? The... Okay, let me suspend Carl here. I think they took it away, guys. There was, I heard it, I heard it. But it doesn't increase your rate of fire. They took that away. No. It had like Desperado before. Like when you had Cranial Spike up, it like gave you some like Desperado type thing where you fired really fast and that was cool. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> so the, the DMT is no longer cool. Next up, we got the Rat King, and uh, they supposedly just changed these things like firing animation to be more reminiscent of the 450s, you know, like the punching out. So see how it looks. Okay, you know what? I might be, you know, what, what the kids call coping, but I think that's actually a lot better and a lot more controllable. But I, I might be coping. It might be like no different than it was before. But I'm pretty sure that before the the gun jumped so much that the body of the gun like covered the reticle. But now I can actually see what I'm shooting at because the gun doesn't cover the reticle anymore. And I'm pretty sure that it, it did used to cover the reticle. So I actually want to try this in Crucible now because that actually seems like it's very usable. Because I've always had an issue with the Rat King where like when you're say the wall is a character in Crucible and you're like this far, like literally from like 12 meters away, it'd be tough to hit your target in Crucible with this thing because the gun just like the recoil and the, the body covering the reticles horrendous. But now I can actually like use it. That's pretty cool. I like it. And here's the article, by the way, the article with all the weapon changes. I'll link it down below, by the way, if you want to follow along with it. But I'm pretty sure we tried everything that was like worth trying. The Divinity tried it, Rat King, Devil's Ruin um, could be made to apply its firing animation to other sidearms, fix an issue where Devil, yeah, don't really need to try that. Symmetry just got like bonus reload speed, don't really have to try that. Gallerhorn just changed a visual to match like the element, don't really need to try that. Touch of Malice, the darkness ball lasts longer, self-explanatory. Um, 
lament just got like its, its healing effect changed. Not something we need to try. So like everything that we needed to try, like to actually see, we, we tried it, but these are just the things that are like self-explanatory, you know? Like Queen Breaker got more reserves, cool. Um, what else? Ariana's Vow, when you break a shield of a barrier champion, it causes them to ignite. We can already see in our heads what that looks like. We don't have to go hunt down a barrier champion. It also works with mashing shields, which is cool. So any like activity with a lot of solar shields, Ariana's Vow is gonna be very top tier. Uh, Deterministic Chaos now got Intrinsic Anti-Barrier. And uh, that's about it. So we tried everything we had to, and uh, that does it for this one. And in the next video, we will be testing out all of the changes to exotic armor. So that video will be coming either later tonight or perhaps tomorrow. So like I said before, make sure to subscribe if you're new so you don't miss out on that. I gotta get back to grinding the final shape. Good luck on your grind, and I will see you later. Peace.